Hello again, this is David D. Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Well, I want to, I've got so many topics, but every time, every day, something comes out in the news, they just want, I want to scream because we're using terminology again, and I'm here to tell you about the terminology, the words we use are very important. I've got a master's in linguistics. I've spent over 30 years of my life trying to understand human language, what people's meaning, what they want to mean with those words. And I will tell you, that's one of the weasel ways people get through physics are using words that mean nothing. Now, when you think about them, make no sense. But when they go blah, 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 it sounds very important. So we're looking at today uh, an article that, that just came out in, on physics.org. Physicists use Einstein's spooky entanglement to invent supersensitive gravit gravitational wave detector. A couple of things going on here that I, I like to point out. One of the reasons science is stuck is because we believe and say all these things and then we make beautiful computer graphics to then reinforce it. If we tell you long en enough times that Michael Jackson slept in a bear, um, uh, uh, one of those chambers because he wanted to change his uh, the skin color, whatever. If we say it enough times, people will believe it. Um, if we show you the way things work, like strings in string theory, and give you all these fantastic graphics, and we make a hundred programs on it, you're going to start believing, oh, it must be right. Doesn't matter. Just because we repeat it, we know in politics this happens all the time. They have a narrative that they want to start a war somewhere, and so they tell you over and over, it's the Russians that did it, oh, North Korea. They create the narratives. The same thing happens in physics. So when we look at this this picture here, when black holes collide, you look at this, wow, this is a really black hole. But if you look in the parentheses, it says image is a computer simulation. But see, when people see this and they see it over and over, oh, it must be, you, you begin to think it's real, whether it's real or not. So if we look at this article, there's uh, I'm going to skip past uh, a lot of this and get to a, a, a point where we have to start looking at some terminology in one of my favorite or my, one of my least favorite terms. We're going to look at the sentence, how, gravitation, how gravitational wave detectors work. Here we go. How wave, gra gravitational waves are not vibrations traveling through space, but rather vibrations of space itself. <laughs> Folks, space in English, space, or espaço in Portug Portuguese, or whatever language. We have human language to mean certain things. And concepts, the idea of space is the idea of there's nothing there. Is space full of stuff? Yeah. But you can't vibrate space. Vibrations of space itself, that's absurd. People talk about it, and it sounds magical. Well, it's, it is magical. It's being made up. This is Harry Potter. So we have to understand these words. Why? Because this sentence means absolutely nothing. Until we get a model of the universe that we have an understanding of what gravity is, what light is, what electromagnetism is, all those things, we are, excuse me, urinating in the wind, to put it mildly. What we are doing is using language and sounding really amazing and stuff. This is what's happening with this stupid documentary, documentary on, called Genius. Other than being a worship-a-thon for Einstein, who's Theories have been disputed for the last 50, 60 years. We even have our latest dispute with GPS where Ron Hatch, one of our members of our uh, John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society, saying, NASA, I can explain that picosecond difference. It's because you have to add the speed of light plus the speed of the satellite, and then that'll make your correction. In other words, the, the what's being measured between satellites GPS is faster than light light plus the speed of the satellite you can't do that in special relativity but no one cares we talk about the vibrations of space itself 
Gravitational wave detectors use laser light to pick up tiny vibrations of space. Tell me what, again, we're picking up, what, how can you pick up vibrations of space? What they think, this is what they're thinking, that space is some magical thing or nothing or whatever it is, and it vibrates. It's got to have physicality to vibrate, folks. If there's nothing else you can take away, that's space, time, space. Space is, by definition, nothing. Mass is what's in space. They always say the space-time fabric. Why do they say that? Because it's sort of like it's hard to bend nothing. Yet they talk about it here willy-nilly. Here, here, here's another one. It takes huge amounts of energy to make space bend and ripple. <laughs> of course, it's nothing. You're going to make absolutely nothing ripple. It better be much. And the other thing is energy. Energy is a concept. You can't give me three energies right here. Put it in my hand. Think about it. Energy is a concept. It isn't real. Folks, I can go on and on, but it's crazy. I'm here to teach you. All right? That's all for now. And remember, don't take what anyone says on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave DeHilster, your science therapist. Ciao for now.